Hello, and welcome to African Hour. Uh, my name is uh, Fru Nde Kimbeng, your humble host. Today is May 2nd, 2021. History is based on records of the past in art, painting, oral, and in writings from a unique viewpoint or angle. Each point of view should be complementary to create a true and comprehensive account of what really happened in the past. If there is one person whose life spans five generations of our struggle for independence, that person is my honorary guest for today. He is a living embodiment of the silent generation of 1945, the baby boomers, generation X, the millennials, generation Y, the Zoomers and generation Z, and the current generation Alpha. Great Grandpa Ndangam is a living Wikipedia of the British Southern Cameroons, today Ambazonia. It is out of humility and adoration that I welcome our father, mentor, and author of Seeded at dawn, the aborted decolonization of the UN Trust Territory of British Southern Cameroons. Papa Augustine Ndangam, National Chairman of SCAPO. Papa, you are welcome to African Hour. Papa Augustine Ndangam, National Chairman of SCAPO. Papa, you are welcome on African Hour. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kimbe. Right. Um, <clears throat> Papa, uh, to start with, um, this program has been going on for so many years. My program, the African Hour, has been going on since uh, 2000. I've interviewed mayors, chiefs of police and so many people on my program. But this is a unique opportunity. Uh, I have been looking for this uh, opportunity and I am so humbled that when I called you, you never hesitated to ask, who are you, or why are you coming on? And you just, uh, I was, uh, it was astonishing to me how you just graciously accepted my invitation to appear on the, uh, African Hour to discuss about uh, this, our struggle, the struggle for our liberation. 
um, you are the bridge uh, for many of us from the West, uh, South, British Southern Cameroon to the Southern Cameroon to the West Cameroon and to what is now known today. Um, with all the due respect, Papa, could you just uh, introduce yourself and before we delved into our discussion. Thank you very, very much, uh, Brother Kimbeng, for having me. Um, I want to thank you not only for what you are doing uh, to widen understanding of uh, our problem in, in British Southern Cameroons, but also for what you uh, single-handedly did in your municipality, in your city, where you are, uh, to get to do the diplomatic work and the persuasive work that achieved understanding and recognition for British Southern Cameroons. Um, one city in a free country like this uh, great America is not a small contribution. It is not. I learned that the Chinese say one uh, journey of a thousand miles to start with one step. Uh, we hope that before long, states in the United States will recognize our country. Uh, we, we hope that through such um, starts, um, the injustice that was done to our country uh, will be recognized by the whole state, by the whole United States, uh, and our country will be free as the United States. So thank you very much for having me. I, um, I was born in the League of Nations uh, mandated territory of British Cameroons. I grew up in that mandated territory of British Cameroons. I then grew up as a man in the United Nations Trust Territory of Southern Cameroons. Uh, I say Southern Cameroons, I, it was still British Cameroons, but um, it, it got, as we, those who know our history know, it got uh, divided into two parts, Northern Cameroon and Southern Cameroons. And uh, we accepted that. Uh, and uh, so we are talking of Southern Cameroons, that is, that was a separate United Nations uh, trust territory. I must, must say this is important for this introduction because in our struggle we have found that the Republic of Cameroon had, um, had given the world the impression that when they talk of southern Cameroons they are talking of part, the southern part of their own country. No, no, let that be clear. Southern Cameroons is the southern part of the British Cameroons, the territory that was United Nations Trust Territory, uh, uh, British Cameroons, not the southern part of the Republic of Cameroons. So uh, uh, the moment uh, in the struggle, I have, I have been, I have led the uh, SCNC uh, I have been a C, uh, uh, deputy um, chairperson of the SCNC for many years. I gave over the, the, that, the leadership of that organization to, uh, uh, I was all, I worked with, uh, with a contang Elad, and after him, I worked with uh, um, Ambassador Fosung. Um, as assistant chairperson of the SNC. Then I, we formed the SCAPO and the SCAPO was led by Dr. Kevin Gumne, who died in, on exile in the United Kingdom 
and I was elected to take over the mantle from him. And now I am leading the organization called Southern Cameroon's People's Organization, SCAPO. That's the word, that is all I can say about uh, <laughs> uh, myself, introducing well, thank myself. You, thank, uh, you. thank you very much for that uh, brief uh, introduction, Pa. And um, from your words, you, stand, you span multiple generation and uh, you are a living library for us uh, and this current generation. And I hope uh, you turn on the light uh, for all of us. Uh, but I must equally commend you, your, your courage, because I remember many years back, you were reporting from Bamenda, the hot seat on ground zero, while we out here in the diaspora, we were really listening to uh, what you were uh, informing the whole world and wondering, also fearing about your security, but uh, that, is, uh, that was courageous and thank you so very much. And I would also, take this opportunity pa, to thank the Cameroonians here in Lowell and in Boston. You know, uh, a, true, a, a good leader is a leader whom when you turn and look behind, you see many people behind you. The achievements and accomplishment of what uh, we've been able to do here in Lowell. I may have initiated the idea and stood in front, but uh, I would not take the credit the credit comes from the hundreds of Ambazonians from Boston and around Massachusetts, who by their numbers, they were able to muster the, the power that uh, the politicians see to say that the people of uh, uh, Ambazonia uh, deserve to be recognized and uh, actually facilitated that uh, transatlantic uh, uh, sister city relationship between uh, the city of Bamenda and Lowell in, uh, on November 5th, 2000 and, uh, uh, 2002. So I thank the Cameroonians and the African communities here in Lowell for standing behind all of us. Um, so on, on that part, let's delve into um, uh, the, our main topic. Uh, recently, I have uh, also interviewed some, uh, a lot of um, our people. Like I said, my role here is to bring uh, people who know to come and talk to our people, exchange ideas, and as always, uh, history is complementary, and uh, I would like that part, uh, I mean, for having spanned this while, uh, you have listened to some of my videos and listened to what some of my guests have spoken. Maybe this is the correct time for you to set the records uh, straight. Thank you. Uh, let me start by thanking you for the initiative of uh, bringing uh, people from different groups so that um, their views of what is wrong, what the question, the Southern Cameroon question is about, and their views on what the conflict, the armed conflict is about. Uh, this is the way understanding should be promoted. It should not be somebody's uh, uh, single idea that we hang on and then it should not be, for instance, my own idea. If I'm talking today, I'm not saying that this is the position or this is what it is. It's one of the ideas. And in doing that, uh, people get informed, see the problem from different angles and from different opinions and they are able to sort out what they should uh, support, uh, which is good. Uh, recently, I, the most recent thing I heard was uh, an interview you gave to one Mr. Agbo Derek. Um, if I can read, if that is his name. I can yes, remember. yes, yes, from uh, also, uh, 
Um, yeah. Oslo in Norway. From Norway, yes. Yes, he's a, a, a patriot. Yes. By the time that interview ended, uh, I was a little confused over a few things that he said, uh, which took me by surprise. And if I was confused, uh, I think it will not only be me back home, our people, that interview must have confused uh, our people. And if, if I may, I will start by making some com comments on what he said. The first thing that he said that was surprised me was that, uh, that the trusteeship agreement gave the UK the right to uh, divide British yeah. Cameroons into Northern Cameroon and Southern Cameroons. So yeah. if, we, if we take anything about that, uh, Britain had the right to divide, well, he was given the right to divide uh, the thing like that. Uh, I, I think that, that the record should be set straight there. Um, the British uh, was given the territory of British Cameroons, which stretched from the sea to Lake Chad, uh, like a triangle narrowing down to Lake Chad, but divided in the middle by a, a portion of uh, land. Uh, well, it was not Northern Cameroon and Southern Cameroons. Uh, well, if we if it, we are talking about the division into Northern and Southern Cameroons, the facts are as stated by the administering authority themselves, which you state as they stated. They divided the British Cameroons into Northern and Southern Cameroons purely for administrative purposes. This is what the British administration said, that it was for administrative purposes that they divided the British Cameroon into Northern and Southern Cameroons and attached them to Nigeria for administration. That is what they said. So if now, uh, I were to bring that back today, it's more or less like what uh, La Republic is doing in Cameroon with the, re with the region from the provinces to now what he calls the North uh, region, the South region, so for administrative purposes. Right, right, right. The, 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 <laughs> La Republic has done a similar thing later okay. on by dividing Southern Cameroons into Northwest and Southwest, and southwest regions. Of, first it was pre provinces and so on. But to go back to the British, if we speak about North, Northern Cameroon and Southern Cameroon, what we can, we cannot uh, blame the British because after they did that, the United Nations came along and uh, endorsed that. That is, if you read uh, resolution 1608, the plebiscite that was conducted was conducted in two separate territories, Northern Cameroon and Southern Cameroons. This was now the United Nations. And so we accept, we accept that. We accept that they, 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 they think, it is not that when they gave the territory to Britain, they, there was something written that they should divide it into. This is what I want to correct. What we are saying about the division into Northern and Southern Cameroons is one thing that our people should, should, should be saying is that when the British, when the administering authority divided, came to the decolonization of our country, the reasons they put down, the official reason for denying our sovereign independence was that each of these half, Northern Cameroon, Southern Cameroons were too small. Each was too small to become uh, a sovereign country. Not only too small, was too small and too poor to become a sovereign country. This is one grievance that we have. If the British, the British who got British Cameroons decided for administrative purposes to divide 
uh, to divide British Cameroons into Northern and Southern Cameroons. And then when it came to the one thing that a people, a territory, everyone in the world aspires to, the, cru the crucial thing that every territory wants, independence, sovereign independence, freedom. Britain puts that as number one, that each half is too small to be sovereign and independent. That is a grievance that we have because there's no logic. I don't see how, what logic there is in something that was one whole, you cut it into half and then take one half and say, each of this one is too poor to be a sovereign country, too small to be a sovereign. If you knew that dividing into two will make each part too small and too poor to be a sovereign country, why divide it in the any way? In, in, I don't see the logic. Uh, this, so this is one of our grievances and this is what we should be saying as, as a people. This is a fact of history, but this is the way we should put it. It's not that they were given the right uh, the, tr the trusteeship, there's no such thing in the trusteeship agreement. Well, the thank you thing, very much, Pa, for, uh, yes. for, for correcting that. And I hope that uh, my viewers and audience uh, note that and should uh, take that uh, language, uh, uh, correct what they say in public. Yes, the other thing, there were quite a number of points that my Gino brother, uh, Derek, uh, made which were confusing. I don't understand what he meant when he said that French Cameroon has recognized Ambazonia. Uh, I heard that and I scratched my head. I said, how? But he didn't go into how, but he repeated that statement that we shouldn't say that we have not been, we don't, we are not recognized by any country. Uh, French Cameroon recognizes Ambazonia. Till today, that statement is confusing to me. Um, uh, Papa, uh, hold on, let me just jump. When you listen to Bia's speech in Boya in Bamenda, mm -hmm. where he went there and said he recognized, he knew that there was uh, a British Southern Cameroon. He knew that there was, uh, 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 that Boya is the capital of British Southern Cameroon. And that coming from the president of- You produced statesmen such as Gokujua, Gufoncha, Tandem Muna, and Tumasa. I am proud, very proud, to be in the Boya. Proud to walk on the same soil like our heroes. History has not forgotten that Boya was the headquarters of West Cameroon. History has not forgotten that Boya was the capital of Southern Cameroon. But you see, when you say the way he said it, <laughs> this is where language is. If, if we start the problem, when we go to uh, later on to talk about the problem, uh, our main problem, uh, what, what are we complaining about? Who, we, we, who, who, who is keeping us from independence? If he recognizes us, uh, where is his uh, embassy in, uh, where, in Ambazonia? When you recognize a country, you go into diplomatic relations. Where, where is it? Uh -huh. We are asking him to produce any document that he signed, whether with the United Nations or with Wover, that gives him authority, gives him the right to the jurisdiction over Southern Cameroons. There is no such document. He is attacking us. He has invaded our country. He's attacking us. Uh, somebody who has recognized you come, can come attacking you Somebody, when you say a country has recognized us, ah, that is the country that you should help defend us. But this is a country that has annexed us and come with a policy 
that they are integrating or assimilating us. And when they meet resistance, they come up with guns to attack. Um, when you say they have recognized us, you give the wrong impression. People don't understand. People are confused. Unless you explain it that if he had said that Bia spoke, contradicted himself in Boya and said that this, 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 this uh, we'll understand. But when he just said, as you say it, he said it, French Cameroon has recognized us. He just confused our people because anybody listening who does not understand the story is confused. I was confused what he meant. I was confused as to what he meant. Uh, Glad that you are shedding was light. Somebody who us cannot be attacking us now in war. I'm glad that you are shedding lights on uh, on this part. And uh, like I said, you are the bridge uh, uh, to the future for us. Because uh, when you look in terms of that, uh, uh, what he said, and look historically, I think there is a picture that um, uh, I saw President Krumah and uh, the Prime Minister of uh, Southern Cameroon. So when you look at it in terms of historical, historical uh, uh, link. And also you saw that uh, when, uh, Brit when uh, French Cameroon La Republique celebrated its 50th anniversary in 2010, the UN brought two maps indirectly. Is that not saying that La Republique, uh, that the UN recognizes us as an entity? The UN, I think, when we come later on to, to where our problem started and where our problem will be solved, uh, the UN is, uh, is an intergovernmental body. Uh, and it is the center of international law. And the, the fact that we were a UN trust territory the our matter, the the injustice, the thing that we are suffering now started on the floor of the UN, and the UN knows it all. The UN knows it all. But the thing about the UN our struggle is because something went wrong at the UN, and which affected us negatively, and our independent story was put, was left abandoned, was left uncompleted. Um, the UN, the, the UN is behaving in the conflict that we have as if, as if they finished everything, as if there's nothing happening, as if it is an internal matter to Cameroon. Uh, so, uh, I, I will, I'll come to it later on in the talk, but let me just finish with uh, my little brother, Mr. Agbo. One of the things he said, which took me completely by surprise, by the fact that he claimed that he was a member of the SCNC, uh, I don't dispute that, that he worked for the SCNC um, in what he described he was doing in Kumba or where. Uh, those, I want to congratulate him in Mamfe or Kumba. I want to thank him for that. But to be a member of the SCNC, and in that show, he says that Chief Ayamba was the Secretary General of the SCNC. Uh, I, I, I am called, again, I'm confused. I'm a, a member of the SCNC. Chief Ayamba was the national president of the SCNC, every Tom and Dick knows that. Uh, Chivayamba was chairperson of the SCNC or national president, and Mr. Form 4 was his assistant. When Chivayamba died, Mr. Form 4 took over the SCNC. So this should be corrected. And uh, if my brother thought Chivayamba was the secretary general, no, he was the leader of that movement. Uh, for from the years that he led, uh, not not secretary general, but it's a minor point. Um, then he said certain some things earlier in his talk about telling uh, Agobala to include something about federation. Federation, in the yes, yes. 
Then later on, he didn't say what meeting. What meeting? He just said uh, to, to include uh, federation on the agenda of the meeting. Which meeting? Uh, when you leave it like that, you confuse people. Then later in the talk, what surprised me again and confused me was what he said about Cardinal Tumi and uh, Dr. Monzu and the Federation. He said it as if these were people who were holding wrong ideas. Uh, so I want to tell that my brother and I, through this, I want to maybe give some education to our people, your listeners, um, about this matter of Federation. Whatever uh, Mr. Bala said about Federation, whatever Cardinal Tumi or Dr. Munzu says about Federation, in the tradition of democracy, which we inherited, which is our own culture in British Southern Cameroons, they have every right to hold their opinion. That is the tradition of democracy that we have. We will even defend them for holding that view. It can be a different view from mine. It can be a different view from Mr. Agors, but they have the right to hold that, that opinion. The tradition of why we are different from Francophone ideas and uh, culture and everything in their own way they were brought up pre-colonial, I mean, colonial heritage. The basic difference between us is when President Bia says a thing, that is what the government has said, and that you, you, don't, you, you, don't, you, you don't say any other thing. No, not in our tradition. Every citizen, I have my own view. Uh, President, I mean, uh, Dr. Munzu has his own. Uh, Cardinal Tumi has his own. They have their rights. So while our own system differs is that when we hold those different ideas, our own form of uh, democracy accommodates those differences through, through election, I mean, through um, uh, referendums, through elections. We explain our differences to the people it is the people who says, well, we'll support this idea. It is the people who say, I agree with this idea, so I vote for this man. That is our own basic differences with our Francophone brothers. Uh, it is not, it is nobody dictates and says this is what it is, and everybody must toe the line. No, I have, heard, I have spoken with the late Cardinal several times in groups, and he said that to us. I have spoken with uh, I've, I've, I know Dr. Munzu very well. We worked in AAC1 together and AAC2. Yes. And uh, the Federation thing, even the whole of Southern Cameroon started with the idea that you go back to the Federation that we started with. Uh, that was AAC1 position. But between that AAC1 and today, the dynamics have changed. Uh, things have changed. <laughs> a war has been declared upon us. And uh, uh, we didn't go into this struggle to be uh, absorbed, assimilated, or integrated as part of Cameroon. No, it was not that. So, uh, I want to tell that my brother, you can agree, disagree with somebody. Don't say that he's wrong. No, that is his own opinion. Leave him. So we should know that in our own form of democracy, if we are a state today, we'll have differences and we want the solution to the present crisis, to the present conflict, to be a solution that takes account of the fact that there are Southern Cameroonians who hold, hold this view, and there are some who hold this view. There are some who hold this view. In the tradition of the democracy that we inherited in our colonial story era, we want those, all, those, all those to have a formula in which 
they participate, they express their views, uh, and I will come to that later on in the talk. Uh, but, but but it is not that they are wrong. They speak as if they are they have crucified somebody. No, no. Okay, uh, Pat. Thank you very much, and also to echo what you have said. I think uh, the French system they live under the mantle of uh, l'état c'est moi. Uh, yeah, so that's it. That's it. <laughs> I am. I am the state. The state, and, the state and, is me. <laughs> and and uh, and and that is quite different. And uh, that is um, something that uh, puzzles me and worries me a lot with this. Uh, uh, the younger uh, the leaders of this of today, pa. I mean, the way you put it so politely, and that people can have differences in ideas, but respectfully uh, discuss them and debate them uh, openly, and that is. Uh, the era in which you you hail from. And I hope through this uh, discussion, um, you will shed, you will turn on that exemplary light of cooperation, working together with this uh, generation, uh, with this our own generation, because I think they seem to have inherited that l'état c'est moi attitude. And, uh, exactly. Uh, and that is exactly what it is destroying our our struggle now. That either me or nobody, though that I have the best uh, ideas. So, uh, with that said, Pa, um, going. F I, I think there's one. There was one thing that the last thing I think I should um, I should uh, take out of the brother Agbos. Uh, but you are, you are being very, very humble. We are, you are our father. I mean, uh, when you call yeah, him God, I don't think so, uh, Derek, thank you too. Thank in, you. in terms of the generation, I don't think he would really uh, want to, uh, by our culture, the head can, uh, the shoulder can never be above the head. <laughs> so thank you. let us, thank, yes. Thank you. Uh, the last thing he talked about, and um, I would like for educational purposes, because this is one thing that has characterized our relationship from 1961 till today, uh, when we were divided into uh, Northwest and Southwest and so on. The, and it is something that misses the point. It is something that misinforms uh, and we should also let our people know that this idea that the problem of uh, Kama, South British Cameroons in Cameroon is, uh, or the Anglophones in Cameroons is marginalization. Uh, I think that is a view that is promoted in, from official circles. Uh, and it is promoted from official circles and from people who want the status quo to be, to be maintained. Uh, when you say the problem is marginalization, you water down, you water down what the problem is. Let us say, uh, the real problem is of the dimension and of the height of Mount Cameroon. You are watering it down to an anthill. An anthill, you know, that is of the height of a man or even a tree. If you take a tree down to the, to the seashore in Victoria, you know, you are talking of a problem that is as huge as a mountain. You are talking of something that is of the height of a tree in Victoria. That is watering down the problem. I'm not saying there's no marginalization. I'm saying that this is an idea that pulls, 
pulls the attention of the world or those who want to understand what is the problem in Cameroon to something which provides an answer, a ready answer to the government in place. Yes, marginalization, that is what Bia's government says, is the, the cry of the minority all over the world. They are marginalized. That's a standard answer uh, that is after, after President Bia and uh, first President Ahijo and then President Bia uh, back down on what was the agreement before the plebiscite and before and what was this agreement them, the pre-plebiscite agreement that we were joining them on the basis a written agreement that we were joining them on the basis of a federation of two states of equal status that was the agreement we joined them on this uh, written agreement that we're going to form a federation of two states of equal status. Now, uh, for our viewers elsewhere, like at home, the, 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 those of us in the United States here will understand it easily. When they say equal equality of states, um, a small state like Delaware or Rhodes Island Oh, Connecticut. When it comes to the Senate, they, 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 they have two members. That's equality. Mm -hmm. Okay? With, and, and the same two representatives in the Senate, like uh, California or like New York, yeah, those big states. And so those states is, that you have mentioned, Pa, like uh, Rhode Island is about, uh, California is about, uh, let me say, 500 times bigger than these states for people right. who are at home. To, right. uh, to know that, to know the difference. Right. So what I wanted to say about our relationship, when we agreed, when Foncha and Ahijo agreed that the basis of our joining them was going to be a federation of two states of equal status, um, immediately the British packed and left they started on these steps of, of assimilation, of annexing us, and the steps are very, very clear what they did in 1972, what they did in 1984, and so on. Those were steps to annex us. What they did in Fumban, first of all, yes. Those were the steps of annexation, if we are tracing it. And Immediately the annexation, we became part of them, not as a state of equal status, but as provinces to them, or as a minority uh, now. The force now, the philosophy of uh, minority versus majority. Now, and the standard thing to tell anybody who, wants, who comes to the government in Yaoundé is to say, well, this, this, yeah, the, 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 the government has heard, that they say they are marginalized, but that is what the minority everywhere uh, in the world will say, that they are marginalized. Even here, leave the Anglophones aside, the Bamiletis have their own complaint as a minority group. The Basas have their own complaint as a minority group. They reduce you from a state to a minority group with the idea of marginalization. The other thing about marginalization is, is you, you are talking about marginalization. The first thing it does is that it does what Yaoundé wants. That is the problem, whether the problem of the British Southern Cameroons is an internal matter, external. public yes. of matter, or an external one. Yes. Yes. Immediately you complain about marginalization. You are saying we are part of them, but Internal. they are treating us badly. And you have put the con in the wrong context. Yes. What we want our people to understand is that when we say from 1961, it is true we voted to join these people. 
but the joining as envisioned in the United Nations plebiscite, the joining that Foncha signed with the Hijo and so on. This is not it. This is not with now. This is not that one. What happened is an annexation and occupation. This is what, what, what the difference is. What annexation, uh, the people, yes, the people are there in fact now ruling us as two provinces. Uh, it, is not, it is not the two states that were signed, agreed upon now. And uh, once they achieve that, they turn to the philosophy of marginalization and promote it. Yeah, that they are, promote, they are promoting it knowing that once the situation is taken, that we are part of them. Now look, when I, uh, President Bia declared war, uh, uh, this present invasion, the what reason did he give? The reason he told the world was that part of his country was seceding. Part of your country, uh, you have not told the world how British Cameroons, whom you claim jurisdiction over, how it came to be under you, came under your jurisdiction. If there is any document which President Bia's government, or President Bia himself, can produce to show the world, to show anybody in the world, and show us in Southern Cameroon where he got a jurisdiction over Southern Cameroon. That will end the problem. We will have no problem. But we say, we put it that it is annexation, it is occupation, because he has no such document. He has no such document to, to, to show the world. He has no right to carry guns to come and attack us that we are part of his country. At what point did we become part of your country? Show us documentary. If there's a treaty of union, let us see it in the union series, uh, I mean the treaty series of the United Nations. Yes, if there was a treaty of union signed with Southern Cameroon that we are one country from now on and registered in the United Nations as it should, we should see it in the treaty series. If the title, if it was another different, other document not called a treaty of union, fine. And signed by the two parties, by the Foncha government and by the Ahijos government, produce it and show there is nothing. We, my organization, have written to the United Nations repeatedly, can we get the document by which the fate of Southern Cameroons was decided, no answer. But, but no answer on that note, is this, does this not also underscore what you said earlier, that uh, the French system is l'état, c'est moi, I am the state, what I say goes. Because if you you know this, but may, maybe you can clarify this. If, uh, the, if Nigeria was like France, well, like uh, French Cameroon, we were also with Nigeria. Could we have lived, we have, we have left Nigeria without a, a, a shot? Nobody raised a stone. Nobody okay. raised a stone. Today, so, today there, a, are, there are bombs, there are guns, there are helicopter gunships attacking us. So I'm just uh, getting to, to the point, I'm just supporting your, your statement that this uh, case is an international uh, right. issue and not a domestic issue. And that right. um, uh, 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 La Republic, the French uh, uh, Cameroon, have skillfully uh, used our brothers and sisters who are probably the beneficiary of their system right. to publicize this struggle as, an, uh, as a marginalization issue so yeah. that La Republique can say this is internal because, I mean, our people are the ones, those who are there are the ones pushing for this kind of marginalization uh, right. that uh, we are subject to. I, the simple it, question is, if it is an internal part thing to your country, show us the document by which 
Southern, British Southern Cameroon, that was a separate United Nations Trust Territory of the same category like you, uh, French Cameroon, show us the legal instrument by which they became part of your country. It's as simple as that. And we have been asking this. I, uh, in SCAPO, we have written to uh, President Bia. We have written to the opposition party, to uh, Dr. Kamto. We have written and raised this question. And we told Professor Kamto, uh, you are an eminent lawyer. Can we, can we decide this matter in court? Can you accept? Let us go to court and, and, and sort out this matter. Let us not be talking to you, to you behind. No, no answer. Well, pa, I mean, it's good you mentioned Kamto about the legal. I've not heard from President Bia. I've written him two times, uh, asking the basis on which he is claiming jurisdiction over the British Southern Cameroons, and no answer till today. Uh, if they are not answering, pa, maybe you can tell, uh, speak to my audience with regards to the Banjun case, because you've mentioned something legal, which is that's another, that's another a legal step to prove that we are an entity and not uh, uh, part of La Republic, and that our issue is international, not uh, uh, internal. Okay, I can, I can, if we can give me a break of about five minutes, uh, I, I can take up that. This is the right time to, to do that so that you organize, uh, you arrange your thoughts part because that's okay. powerful. Uh, just, just okay, uh, on that note, um, uh, in fact, uh, I would like part to take uh, a, a break. In the meantime, I will play the uh, Ambazonian uh, national anthem uh, on this very special uh, edition of uh, uh, African Hour. You shall live in plenty, building our need, and your okay. children shall okay. be like the sky. Mm -hmm. My name is uh, Fru Kimbeng, and you are watching a special edition of African Hour. And uh, African Hour is humbled by the presence of uh, uh, Papa Augustine Dangam, the national chairman of SCAPO. And Papa is uh, a giant, not only a giant, but I would say, in my own words, uh, one of the fathers of our struggle that uh, we have an opportunity for him to uh, make the records straight. There is a lot that Pa has to share. So again, Pa, uh, before we took a break, um, I asked you uh, to, because you brought the legal aspect of our struggle that you have talked to the quote unquote, the elected president of French Cameroon, uh, Dr. Camto, President Camto, as a lawyer himself, asked him to prove, bring the legal documents that we had an agreement with them uh, joining uh, that they, we are part of their country and they have yet to uh, to, uh, to provide such uh, documents or treaty. So, and uh, it is my understanding that um, you also uh, file a lawsuit against uh, La Republic at the African court in Banjun. Uh, correct me if my records are wrong, Pa, and said the no, records No, they are not wrong. So, they are not wrong. Um, and thank you for asking that question. But when we started talking, um, I think what I've said about writing or uh, SCAPO writing to the government of the La Republic, to President Bia, and not only to the government, but to the opposition, Dr. Kamto, uh, is correct. Uh, we 
we did not think, uh, we have not heard from President Bia, we did not hear from him, and we wrote to uh, the opposition party, which uh, contested uh, the last presidential election in that country and claimed victory. Uh, we've not heard from government, we've not heard from the opposition. But, uh, and thank you for raising the matter of, uh, the, uh, of our cases in Banjul. Um, when I talked earlier, I was talking about marginalization and trying to say that that is not the problem. Before I talk about the Banjul case, uh, if marginalization is not the problem uh, in Cameroon, what is the problem? If you allow me, let me go back and, 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 and state the other side of the coin. If it is not marginalization, what is it? Uh, because to criticize that, you know, this is this marginalization is what is promoted by government so as to make our matter an internal matter and then generalize it as minority groups. This is what all minorities do. Minorities in this country, all minority, the Bamilikis, the Basa, the Bulus. This is what. So if it is not marginalization, what is it? What is the Boya Mountain? What is the main issue that uh, our people are fighting against. But our fight, our fight, our people are not at war because they picked up arm to solve a particular problem of their country. No. Uh, our people are at war defending because they were attacked. They are war, they are defending themselves and their territory and their country because they were attacked. And what is the root cause of that attack? The root cause, in my view, and what I consider to be factual, verifiable fact, the what I will call Mount Boya, the real issue, are two things. Two. One, the fact that British Southern Cameroons, British Southern Cameroons, which was a United Nations trust territory till today, or was not decolonized in the program of the United Nations, decolonizing territories. British Cameroon was not decolonized. That is the first big problem. 